Hey everybody, Jeff Miller here, head of GRE Instruction for Target Test Prep. Today's video, I wanna give you some cool quant tips that are gonna help you achieve a high quant score. Let's get started. Tip number one, don't be afraid to use smart numbers. I love this with percents and even fractions and sometimes ratios. If you're given a percent question where you have to do some percent increases, some percent decreases, you can always start with a smart number. Usually that number is gonna be 100. If you're doing something similar with fractions where you're gonna do some fractions less, fractions greater, use a smart number that is divisible by the denominators in your fraction, particularly the LCM of those denominators. It's particularly useful in overlapping set questions, for instance. Point is, you can get away from using too many variables by using smart numbers for percent questions, for fraction questions, and even ratio questions, and that's gonna make you that much more efficient during the quant section. Tip number two, use your calculator to your advantage. Calculator's there, right? But do we need to use it all the time? No, if you do, you're gonna be slow, you might even make mistakes because it's an on-screen calculator and you're just gonna waste time. For example, if you need to know the answer of what is 12 factorial, and you have five answer choices and only one ends in a zero, well, you know the rule because every factorial greater than four factorial ends in a zero, that that's the answer. Do you need a calculator to get that? No. Does the jury know that you don't need a calculator? They do, and they're trapping you into using it. So the point is, use it strategically. Use it when you have to do nasty division of decimals or nasty multiplication of decimals, things like that, but don't overuse it and practice how you play, meaning when you're doing your practice tests, start understanding when it's good and bad to use that calculator, and that's gonna help your quant score on test day. Number three, when attacking your quant comparison questions, don't forget about the given information. I can't tell you how many questions I see missed because students jump into the statements or the two quantities. Look, if it says X is greater than zero, that's gonna be important. If it says X is between zero and one, meaning it is a proper fraction, that's gonna be important. So you have to make sure that you absorb that information and you use it when applying it to your quantities. If you don't, you're gonna get a bunch of questions wrong that heck, you probably think should be right. And then when you get to the end of the test, you're gonna wonder why your quant score is lower than you thought. So if you make sure to read, absorb, and use all given information, that will be really helpful for your quant score. Tip number four, and you've heard me say this in so many videos, including my short videos, get the formulas memorized, please get them memorized. We have them all over TTP. We have them in our downloadable equation guide, which you can even get on our blog. And then we have our own uh, quant flashcards in the course itself, which are amazing. Get Use them. Get those formulas down. If you see an average rate question, you got to know its total distance over total time. If you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, you need to know the ratio of sides to angles is x, x root 3, 2x. These are things that have to come out of you quickly and efficiently. If you don't have those formulas down, the whole quant section is gonna be a slog. So if you get them down, conversely, you're gonna see questions. Not only are you gonna know how to attack them, but you're gonna use the appropriate formulas efficiently. Your confidence is gonna be sky high, and it's gonna help you get an amazing GRE quant score. Tip number five, and this should be somewhat obvious, don't try to game what you're gonna see on your test. Don't go looking at all the practice exams and saying, well, I see this many general word problems, this many rate questions, this many ratios. Don't do that. You never know what's going to show up on test day, which means you need a very detailed and in-depth study plan that covers all components, all nooks and crannies of these quant topics. By doing that, you'll be prepared for anything and everything to show up on test day. If you want to spin that roulette wheel and hope that you see what you studied, things probably won't end well for you on that GRE. So get a good study plan together. We have tons of videos discussing how to do that. Heck, TTP has an amazing quant course and study plan, which is super thorough. But in general, make sure it's thorough, making sure you're, make sure you're covering your bases, and that's gonna put you in a position for success no matter what you see on test day. Tip number six, don't leave anything blank, because that means you're just gonna get it wrong. Even if you don't know the answer to a question, take a guess, because that guess could be right, and if it's wrong, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna lose points for that. So don't leave anything blank. You know what you can do, make a guess, mark it for review, and come back to it if you have the time. But leaving something blank is just gonna put you in a worse spot than if you took a guess. So again, make sure nothing is left blank. You take a guess, 
mark it for review and come back if you have time. Hey everybody, I had a blast giving you some tips on how to improve your GRE quad score. Hopefully you can take some of these tips, apply them to your practice exams, apply them to your real GRE, and hopefully this can give you the boost you need in your GRE quad score. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, leave comments, ask me to make other videos because I'll definitely do them in the future. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.